Welcome to Summer Reading Series, and I'm delighted to be a part of this series. I want to say how much I love and appreciate Pastor Levi and Jenny Lusco. They are remarkable leaders, and if you ever want to know, you know, how God feels about a church, check out what kind of leaders He gives them. And all I can say, Fresh Life Church, is God gave you two of the greatest leaders in the kingdom of God. I love Levi, and I love Jeannie, and I love their ministry. He's not saying what everybody else says. There's a depth, there's a beauty, and there's a power and truth that you hear every week that is remarkable. And I so honor you. Levi has poured into our ministry and poured into our conferences, and it's an honor to be able to give back to Fresh Life Church. You're touching the world. And I pray that what I share today, you'll never forget. As you know, that one of the books that you're reading this summer is Acres of Diamonds. And I want to tell you the premise of the book. It's a true story about a man by the name of Russell Conwell. Russell Conwell was a businessman who went to the Middle East because he had read the Bible and he wanted to see the holy sites back in the late 1800s. Of course, they didn't have hotels and bus tours, so he hired an Arab guide. He had camels to travel on, and they stayed in tents and would have campfire food. And every night as entertainment, the Arab guide would tell stories and one night during his tour of the Holy Land, this Arab guide told Russell Conwell the story that I'm about to give you. As a matter of fact, I had permission to put it in our, our book and you can read it word for word in the kind of old English that it was written in back in the 1800s. Now listen to this. This story was so phenomenal that when he put it in a small pamphlet, it sold 7 million copies. And then he gave the speech on it 6,000 times. And with the prophets between the, imagine in the 1800s, a book selling 7 million copies with no marketing and the speech that he gave receiving 6,000 invitations to give it. It's obvious it was shaking the nation. And he took the resources and prophets and founded Temple University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's an amazing thing, um, you know, when you think about it, that a major university, Temple University, I'm sure you've heard of, has tens of thousands of students. It all came from one story, and here's the story. It's a true story. There was in South Africa a man by the name of Ali Hafid. Ali Hafid was a farmer. He worked hard every day by the sweat of his brow. He had a he had a plow and he had acreage and he had a little meager cabin that he and his family lived in and he had an ox and I'm sure that every day, you know, it was just uh, trying to uh, fence, the, fence the grounds and plow the fields and work the gardens and produce food and resources for his family. One day a traveler came through and he said, it's a shame you have to work so hard to provide. Have you heard what's happening in India? In India, they were discovering diamond mines. And he said, if you could just get the resources to go to India, you could go to a certain valley. And there, where two mountains are, you can reach down into the stream and in the what they call the Valley of the Moon. And you can pick up rocks that are diamonds. They're huge. And they could make you fabulously wealthy. And that night, even though he had a pretty good life, he was discontent when he went to bed. And Finally, he made up his mind, I'm going to sell the farm. He sold the farm, the plow, the little house that he had, and all the acreage. He took the profits, and he hugged his wife and children goodbye and said, when I come back, you'll be so wealthy, you'll sit on thrones. And he said, I'm going to find the wealth that is out there, and I'll come back with diamonds. And he went out and searched all over the world. He went to India and he found no diamonds. He ended up in Europe and found no diamonds. Finally in Spain, in a moment of desperation, he had spent all of his money searching for diamonds and never found them. He knew he could not get back home. And in a moment of depression and defeat, he decided to take his own life by jumping into a, a raging river. And before he did it, he wrote a suicide note that someone got to his wife and it said, there are no diamonds anywhere. It was a tragedy. This man took his life because he never found the wealth he was looking for. But listen carefully. This is where the story gets amazing. Because 
The man who bought the farm took the same ox, the same plow, worked the same field, lived in the same old farmhouse. And one day as he was plowing the field, he noticed that the field was filled with black rocks. These black rocks, when the sun hit them, would sparkle with the colors of the rainbow. And they were annoying to him because he would have to stop the plow and stop the ox and reach down and throw them over. By the, by the time he got through, there were nothing but stacks and stacks of these rocks everywhere. And one day he found a particularly large, beautiful one. And he thought to himself, I'll take it back to the cabin. And he had a little fireplace in the little meager cabin that he lived in with his family. And he said, I'll give it a little decorations. And he put it on the mantel of the fireplace and didn't give it much thought. And soon the local priest came by and welcomed his family to the community. And as they were talking in mid-sentence, the priest stopped and he said, where did you get that? He noticed the rock on the mantel. He said, where did you get it? And he said, I found it in the field. They're all over the place. He said, you don't understand. That rock is a diamond in the rough. I know that it doesn't look like much. It'll have to be cut. It'll have to be worked on. But that is a diamond. And sure enough, when they investigated and checked it out, it was the discovery of a massive diamond back in the 1800s that was worth $25,000. It was the birth of the world's largest diamond mine, the famous Golando Diamond Mine in South Africa, where the Queen of England has purchased the diamonds that are in her crown. And much of the royalty of Europe, they know to get the best quality diamonds to go to that diamond mine that was there in, and still is to this day in South Africa. Now think about what I'm telling you now. This really applies to your life because when you understand the power of where you are. Watch this. That man who flung himself into that river never realized that he actually had been living in acres of diamonds. And you may not realize it today, but you're living in acres of diamonds. You need to know the field that you're in is loaded with potential. You'll find this story repeated over and over again. Some people do not realize the unsearchable riches they have in Jesus Christ in their hand today. When I think about this story, I can't help but think about the prodigal son. I think about how that the prodigal son was at home and he had everything. You could say he was living in acres of diamonds. In the father's house, he had provision. In the father's house, he had everything that he needed. In the father's house, he was protected and blessed. But something happened to that prodigal son. He, he made up his mind that what he was looking for was not in what he had, but it was out there somewhere. And so the Bible said he left his father's house. And I'm sure that there were friends who were saying, man, out there, they're really living. Just, just, like, just like young people feel the temptation now to leave the church. Every teenager gets to a place where the enemy comes and starts saying, get your eyes off of where you are and where God's planted you in the church and, 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 and look out there. Life is really out there. And I could almost hear the prodigal son's friend saying, man, out there, they're really living. Out there where the party is. Out there where, the, where, where everybody just does their own thing. If you want to sleep with your girlfriend, sleep with your girlfriend. If you want to live wild and party, it's out there. It's not here in the father's house. Life is out there. And he swallowed that life. And the Bible said he went out, took his resources and left the father's house. And he spent all that he had searching for diamonds. He ended up in a pig pen. You know the story. He lost all of his friends and all of his resources. And he came back home only to find what he never saw when he was there. He realized in his moment when he got back to the father's house, everything that I ever longed for I was living in acres of diamonds and I never even realized it. I never even recognized it. And I'm telling you today, 
that if you're not careful, you will get to a place that you'll sell out so cheaply. I see young people who sell out so cheaply because the devil says the diamonds are out there. It's not in the church. It's not in the Bible. It's not in all this God stuff. It's not in living your life. What difference does it make? Just go for it. Go for it out there. And the truth is life and peace and joy and purpose and protection and provision. Everything we need is right here. We're living in acres of diamonds. If you know Jesus Christ, you are living in the unsearchable riches of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, he will meet your every need. The problem is in the process of making a diamond, it takes time. Diamonds are nothing but carbon and, and atoms that, that have to be put under intense pressure and heat. It's, it takes intense heat and pressure to form a diamond. And if the pressure and the heat is just right, the atoms begin to bond and suddenly a diamond is born. And I wonder how many right now are facing pressure and heat like you've never faced before. Don't run from your trials. For in them, you will learn more. You will become more. You will do more. It's not way out there. The Bible said that the eyes of the fool are on the ends of the earth. In other words, it's always somewhere out there and you don't recognize that you're living in acres of diamonds. And especially if you're going through heat and pressure, it's so much easier to say the grass is greener on the other side. This marriage is just not working out. And, 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 and this, this dream is just not working out. Or, you know, I'm under heat and under pressure, so I must be in the wrong place. I must have missed God's will. No, you may be right in the perfect will of God and God has you under intense heat and pressure because he's gonna give birth to the diamonds in your life. You can't get all of the, that God has for you without the fire. You can't get all that God has for you without trials and going through tears and going through brokenness and going through things and, and transitions that you don't understand all that that's going on, but God is making a diamond out of you. He said, I won't put more on you than you're able to bear. God knows what is involved in making a diamond out of you. And I'm telling you in every church, there are acres of diamonds. In every marriage, there are acres of diamonds. Somebody said, I'm gonna just quit this marriage because, you know, it's just not, we just don't love each other and the grass looks greener on the other side. There might be a busted septic tank over there. The grass is not greener on the other side. I'm so thankful. Sharice and I have been married 31 years. We have five children and four grandchildren. But there were times when our marriage was a strain. There were times when, when, when I'm just being honest and telling you the truth, where we didn't like each other very much. There were times when the enemy whispered to her and whispered to me, you weren't supposed to be together. God didn't put you together. Somebody said their matches are made in heaven, but some are made in hell. And there were a few times when we felt like, like, Lord, have mercy with the stress of the church and the stress of raising children and the stress then later of teenagers and, and raising teenagers and then trying to hold your marriage together. It's intense heat and pressure, but I'm so thankful that in those hardest days and roughest days, I didn't walk away and Sharice didn't walk away because today, relationally and family. We are living in acres of diamonds. All my children are serving the Lord. All of my family is working in the ministry and loving Jesus. And I'm telling you, it's worth the fight for your family. It's worth the fight for your marriage. There's acres of diamonds in that marriage. You know, when you first get married, everything is ideal. Oh, I love you so much. Oh, it's just so ideal. And then a few months, there comes an ordeal. And then if you're not careful, you get to thinking this is a raw deal. And then people just make up their mind. I'm ready for a new deal. That's not the answer. You know what David prayed in Psalms 119 in verse 18? Open my eyes to wonderful things. All you're seeing is the negative. All you're seeing is, is the negative of raising those children. And they're getting on your nerves and they're about to drive you crazy. But I promise you there's diamonds in those children. 
Stay with it. Hold your ground. You can't always be your children's best friend, parent. Sometimes it's intense heat and pressure. No, I can't let you go to that party. No, I, I just don't feel good about you being with that particular. But when you, when you take a stand like that, you don't understand God's working behind the scenes and he's going to make diamonds out of your family and out of your marriage. I thought about our church. I, 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 in, in, you know, here in Free Chapel, acres of diamonds. When I would get up at our, and, and when I came to our church, this is the only church I've ever pastored, and I've been here 30 years. And, but when I looked at the church, I didn't see the challenges. I didn't see the, the lack of money, the lack of building, the lack of support. I saw acres of diamonds. What are you looking at right now that God needs to open your eyes and all you're seeing is the negative and all you're seeing is what you don't have and all you're seeing is what other people have that you wish you had. But I'm promising you right now that God says, I've got acres of diamonds in the field that I put you in. If you won't quit and you won't give up, everything you're dreaming for is on the other side of not giving up. I love the story of Abraham and Lot. The Bible said that Lot said to his older uncle Abraham, he said, uh, uh, our shepherds are fighting over the water holes. And Abraham, the peacemaker, said, Lot, you choose. The well-watered plains, the green grass uh, fields, or in this direction behind curtain number two, the desert rocks and lizards and rattlesnakes and scorpions and dry sand. Now watch this. And the Bible said that Lot chose the well-watered plains of Jordan. And just beyond that, he could see the, the, the flashing lights of Las Vegas, Sodom and Gomorrah. And it looked like that the grass was greener on the other side. So he goes and takes his family and he's moving in the direction of what looks so good. Abraham goes to the desert. While he's there, I never read that Lot found diamonds in Sodom and Gomorrah. No, he lost his children. He lost his integrity. He lost his wife. She was turned into a pillar of salt. He committed horrible sin with his own daughters. His family name was in shambles and his life was a wreck. But watch this. Abraham gets out into the desert. Listen carefully. A place of intense heat and pressure. And there God opens his eyes. There's nothing out there but stars in the heaven and sand under his feet. But God gives him a vision and suddenly he sees acres of diamonds and he picks up the sand and he says, as the sands of the seashore, so shall your seed be natural Israel. And then he looks up in the sky and he sees the twinkling stars. And God says, as the stars of heaven, spiritual Israel, the church, so will your seed be. He didn't get that in green grass. He didn't get that in the bright lights of, of Sodom and Gomorrah. He got that in a place called a desert in intense heat and pressure. And what I'm preaching to you today is don't allow the enemy to cause you to walk away when it's heat and when it's pressure and when things don't look good. You're living in acres of diamonds. Everything God promised you, he will bring it to pass if you won't give up. There's a phenomenon that takes place in South America where the Amazon River, I've been here, where the Amazon River rushes into the Atlantic Ocean. And way, the story is told by Booker T. Washington, a true story of a ship back in older days that was out at sea. And they were so far from land, they couldn't see the land. And they were out at sea and had been out there for many days and they had run out of water. And they were dehydrated and thirsting to death. And uh, they saw another ship come on the horizon and they instantly began to signal. Back then, the only way they could communicate was with flags. And so they began to signal with flags, help, we need water. And back came the message from the other ship, let down your bucket. And the captain said, they must have misunderstood. Send the signal again. We need water. And back came the response, let down your bucket. And then the ship went off and they didn't see it anymore. 
And the captain said, I don't know what it means, but let down a bucket and pull the water up. And they let that bucket down into the Atlantic Ocean. And when they pulled the bucket up and they tasted the water, they were astonished because it was clear, cool, delicious, fresh water. What they didn't know was 200 miles away, the Amazon River surges, the biggest river in the world, surges into the Atlantic Ocean and forces the heavier salt water to go to the bottom. And right under their ship for 200 miles was clear, cool, fresh water. I can't help but think that somebody needs to hear today, let down your bucket right where you are. God has all you need to get to a place of victory and destiny and purpose. If you're hungry, let down your bucket. If you're thirsty, if you're empty, if you're dry, let down your bucket. If you're depressed, if you're defeated, if you feel like you're addicted and you can't get free, listen, Jesus is the living water and he says there's victory and there's provision for your every need if you will let down your bucket. People have had the answer right under their nose and quit and missed it. Ecclesiastes says that there are 28 seasons, a season to weep, a season to laugh, a season to gather, a season to scatter. And it gives 28 seasons, but the one season you'll never find in, 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 in Ecclesiastes 3 is the season to quit. It's never the right time to quit. I want to close with this thought. When Jesus hung on the cross, the world's greatest treasure, you talk about diamonds, you talk about the world's greatest treasure, it was Jesus hanging on that cross, paying the price for your sin and my sin. The Bible said there were two thieves, one on one side of the cross and one on the other. And amazingly, they both were looking at the same thing, Jesus in the middle. And one of the thieves, when he looked, saw trash. One of the thieves saw nothing that was of worth and he cursed the Savior with his last fleeting breaths and he went into eternity lost. But there was another thief who looked at the same cross, who looked at the same crown, who looked at the same nails, who looked at the same wounds, who saw the same blood dripping and he said, when you come into your kingdom, I don't see trash, I see a king because a king has a kingdom. When you come into your kingdom, you don't look like much now, you're under intense heat and pressure and it doesn't look like it's worth anything, but I see something. Lord, open my eyes to see. They were both looking at the same thing. One didn't see it, one saw the king of kings. And he said, when you come into your kingdom, remember me and Jesus said, this day, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my little Franklin translation. This day, you'll have acres of diamonds. This day, you'll be with me in paradise. I'm so thankful that I saw it. I was like that thief that so many in the world, they, they hear the gospel. They see the, 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 they hear the old story and it doesn't move them. They just can't see it. But if you can see it, if you know your sins are forgiven, if you know God has cleansed you, if you know that your name is written in the book of life, you are living in acres of diamonds. But the thing that messed me up about the story that Ali Hafid told Russell Conwell was the man took the same plow, the same land, the same little meager cabin, and he turned it into acres of diamonds. Do you know that somebody could take the same marriage, the same job, somebody who's using an excuse, the neighborhood that you've lived in or the background that you've come from, somebody could take the same neighborhood, the same situation, and they could turn it into acres of diamonds. And it happens when Jesus Christ becomes Lord of your life and you see him 
then suddenly he opens your eyes to the sand. He opens your eyes to the stars. He opens your eyes to the potential of the job where you are, to the marriage that you have, or to the, to the college or the purpose and the plan of God, the talent that God has given you. And I'm telling you that there are acres of diamonds inside of you spiritually and in every way. And it takes connecting to God to see it. Would you like to connect to God today? I want to pray for you. And right where you are, just receive this today. He's going to open your eyes and you're going to see that there's acres of diamonds and the same plow, and the same circumstances, and the same challenges that you may be cursing and wishing that you had somebody else's life because their grass looks so much greener than yours. God is saying, I want you to work and plow in your own field, and I will bless you, and I'll make you a blessing. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, why don't you say like that thief on the cross, I see it. I see it. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray today for every person who's discouraged, for every person who feels like giving up, for every person who's almost walked away from the plow and the field that's loaded with acres of diamonds, but because of intense pressure and heat, they felt like giving up. May the Spirit of the Lord come now and encourage them and lift them and if there's one watching me who doesn't know you as Savior, may they receive your power, the power of the cross, the name of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, as their redemption. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.